Hi, I am Caitlin Kinney, and today we're going to kind of dive into my process and how I come up with a concept and all the way to the completion of a photo. So my world of photography is split into two different halves, one of them being commercial with product and the other one being my personal work, which is usually a little bit more surreal and magical. So in the world of surreal and magical, I always stop and think about what's visually exciting me right now. And lately it's been a lot of nostalgia and going through old home videos and kind of reliving my youth and I'm a full-on 90s kid completely so I loved the idea of bringing the 90s into my life now which is filled with adventure and hiking and camping and Tucson and landscapes so I wanted to figure out how to bring that world and my current world together which started making me think of where are 90s girls now like what are they doing they're getting in their 30s and they're becoming these really strong independent women so let's figure out how to bring that into a concept. So when creating one of my personal photos the process usually starts with the concept which is what I just discussed and then we move into okay how do we actually bring this into the world how do I make it and for me usually it's how do I make it on a budget. One of the first things that came to my mind for the 90s was um, clear plastic like that seemed like it was everywhere there was color variations, if there was a plastic robot dog or a plastic um, you know, nano pet or the jelly shoes that were really popular when we were kids, like it's clear, it's plastic, and they come in different colors. So another big thing was the inflatable furniture in the 90s, and um, so I kind of was thinking, how do I bring inflatable furniture into the Arizona landscape with women being empowered? And I thought about having this kind of ridiculous idea of having a tent, but it be a completely like really non-functional blow up inflatable furniture. So since that's not really um, a thing because the actual tents that would have any sort of inflatable aspect are functional and they look like camping tents, I decided to purchase um, some clear plastic and I'm just gonna try to make the tent. Like this just absolutely screams 90s to me. I used one that looked pretty much exactly like this as a nightlight next to my bed. So jelly shoes were the bomb back in the day. When I went online to look at little kid jellies, I started thinking like, well, my models are gonna be grown women, so I think they would probably have like grown women's shoes. So I was able to find a version of jelly shoes that is uh, for grown women. And you know, I'm honestly kind of a little bit excited to wear these after the shoot, so I bought them in my size. So during the shoot, I want to make sure that my models understand the mood that we're trying to get to and the empowerment of you're a 90s kid, but you're a grown woman now and you're independent and you're hiking and you're out on adventures by yourself and you're loving your life. So making sure that my models know the story that we're going to be telling and make sure that they're in the mindset that's going to be matching the concept in the photo. So once we're done with the shooting, then comes my personal favorite part, which is the editing. And I grew up in Photoshop. Photoshop was my version of a video game, pretty much. So while these photos were fairly simple compared to other ones I've done, this, there was still um, compositing that needed to happen. So that tint wasn't actually there whenever we shot for various reasons, one of them being it was really hard to keep air in it for very long. So I shot the tint separately. And the first thing is to make sure that my, my image my flat image, just as is, has all the pieces in it. All the puzzle pieces are there and ready to be put together. So compositing in that tint um, and making sure that if the hair is flying in the photo that I get all the different shots that I want of the hair flying, any other moving pieces I'm grabbing from separate photos and I'm compositing them together. Once all of that is composited together, then I start going in with retouching, making sure that there isn't anything that's distracting, like a twig that's in the way or flyaway hairs that are distracting, um, you know, anything that just doesn't look like it's intentional because all of my photos are very intentional. Every single piece of that photo is thought out and it's meant to be there. So once I have all of the distractions retouched out then comes the fun part which is the final step of like adding the last little bit of spice into it which is all of the color so I make sure everything is pieced together everything is retouched it's a clean image but it still doesn't look like my image because it doesn't have all of the color and the vibrancy and the light 
So that can come in all sorts of different ways, whether it's adjustment layers or plain colors, um, just in different blending modes. But it usually is some sort of combination of anywhere from like three to 20 different layers in Photoshop of different colors acting different ways. And then it's just a, a game of painting, just painting over and over again. And um, that's where my painting skills come in, photography and painting. I need them both in order to create what I do. So all in all, I really would like to stress the point that magic and surreal and creative worlds can completely be made with a smaller budget and can be made by anybody who can come up with that concept and that idea. You don't have to have large production teams in order to create some magic. You just need to know a little bit about Photoshop and be, you know, intentional about your concept behind it and make sure you create that story that's complete and whole. I think probably the thing that I gained the most from this project in particular, aside from just digging into the pleasure of nostalgia and reliving 90s and now having lots of fun 90s stuff around my room to have, um, is just to roll with the punches. Because even though I can plan and plan, there are still quite a few times where something falls through or it doesn't work out completely as I envisioned it. Originally, I had envisioned my tent being there with the photo shoot, but I didn't anticipate how incredibly difficult it was going to be to make this inflatable tent totally airtight, completely sealed. So that was definitely the biggest challenge of this project, but rolling with the punches and making sure that, okay, plan A doesn't work, what's plan B? Because we have to make sure that this happens. So being able to lean on my skills in Photoshop and being able to be a little bit creative with my problem solving um, definitely is, it's encouraging to know that I can do that with personal projects so I can bring that in with client projects too.